Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support, please subscribe. The real cause of death of Henry VIII. In today's society, we talk a lot about the Tudor history and how it lasted nearly around a century and a quarter. But something that is not often spoken about is the death of a certain king. Instead, we hear about how he was a tyrant, a man who had six wives, changed the face of religion, and a man who had lots of people executed, including two of his said wives. Henry came to power in 1509 after the death of his father. He wasn't to be king, but his elder brother died previously, meaning that the line of succession fell to him. Henry initially was thought to have been a rather handsome man, who was tall in stature, with a very athletic body. He had a great ability for sports such as horse riding and jousting, as well as being known for his strength. But when the time came for Henry's death, he was something of a shadow of the man that he used to be. His waist had more than doubled in size, measuring at a staggering 53 inches. And as he declined in health, his physical appearance also diminished. Some would even say that Henry's failing appearance and his short temper went hand in hand with the fate of his wives. In today's video, we are looking at the fate of the once King of England, and especially what happened upon his death on the 28th of January 1547. Henry left behind an England that was so very different to what he ascended to the throne. England was a changed nation in many senses, especially regarding the fate of the church. Henry VIII made his mark on the country, and today he is remembered as England's most famous king. However, join us today as we look at the death of Henry VIII, and remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. When we talk about Henry VIII, the first aspect of his legacy to arise is the fact he had six wives, but today we're going to plunge into the illness that plagued Henry illnesses that were severe and caused Henry a great amount of suffering. The first noteworthy illness is smallpox, a disease that Henry caught at the age of 23. The disease was deadly and could have had devastating consequences for him, but he survived, only to catch malaria just seven years later. Again, Henry survived, only to find himself in a serious jousting accident at around the age of 33. This accident stayed with Henry for the rest of his life. Some historians would go as far to say that the accident plagued Henry in a way that attributed to him becoming depressed and morose. Before this accident, Henry is said to have been somewhat of a kinder man. It was only after that reports of him becoming the tyrant king we now know him as emerged. Whilst Henry was jousting with the Duke of Suffolk, he was injured by receiving a lance in his head just above his right eye. Henry went on to suffer with headaches and migraines, possibly as a result to his head injury, but it was at the age of 45 that Henry suffered yet another injury at the hands of jousting. Henry fell off his horse and found himself pinned under his armour and the horse that had collapsed upon him. He was rendered unconscious and this lasted for around two hours before he came around. The incident is thought to have attributed to Henry's then decline in his physical appearance and his mental health. After this point, Henry suffered from terrible mood swings. It is now believed that Henry undoubtedly suffered from brain damage as a result of the accident. Henry then, throughout the later years of his life, started to become the man we recognise in portraits. His weight increased and he became obese through overeating and possible diabetes and high blood pressure as well as a decline in exercise. The lack of exercise is contributed to the fact that Henry suffered from something called varicose ulcers on his legs. These ulcers caused the king to give up something that he loved so much. They caused him a tremendous amount of pain, so much so that eventually he was unable to walk and is reported to have been carried around in a chair. After his lifestyle became worse, his health severely declined. Obesity hastened his death, and at the age of 55, he passed away on the 28th of January, 1547, at the Palace of Whitehall. The day before Henry died, he saw his confessor and received Holy Communion. Death was imminent, and all those around him could see it, but the doctors did not have the courage to tell Henry this. You see, predicting the king's death was treason and it could have resulted in execution. But this was left to Sir Anthony Denny, 
a gentleman of the Privy Chamber, who bravely on the 27th of January told Henry that, in man's judgment, you are not like to live, and that he should remember his sins as every good Christian man should do. Henry responded with, The mercy of Christ is able to pardon me all my sins, yes, through they were greater than they be. It was on his deathbed that Henry realised he had committed many heinous and sinful acts in his life, especially, but not limited to, the executions in which would make his reign famous. It's not exactly known how many people were executed by order of the king, however, some estimates even suggest that it could have been around 72,000 people killed at the behest of the notorious king. The second half of Henry's reign is mostly categorised by the execution of his wives, relatives, close friends and confidants, and powerful nobles. He had even ordered the death around a week earlier of his last victim, Henry Howard, the Earl of Surrey. Because of this, Henry's last known words and orders were to summon Archbishop Thomas Cranmer to his side. Denny asked the king whether he wanted to, any learned man to speak with, and the king responded that he should get Cranmer to be by his side. He then went into a sleep, and after this he would consult with the archbishop. Cranmer was sent for, but it took hours for him to make his way to the palace on the frozen roads. He arrived after midnight on the 28th of January and made his way to the king's bedside. However, Henry was in his last few hours and was beyond talking and was barely conscious. His last moments have been described as, at the end there was no master and servant, no prince and churchman, just a priest preparing a departing soul for eternity. Cranmer begged Henry to give a sign that he trusted Christ for salvation and in response he felt a grip on his hand tightening slightly. It was an evangelical departure, no anointing, no reading or Latin prayers, just a simple acknowledgement of the all-sufficient atoning work of Christ. Cranmer would have been glad of that. Shortly afterwards, at around 2am, King Henry VIII died. His exact cause of death remains uncertain, however... It is believed to have been a pulmonary embolism or renal and liver failure. It's been recorded mostly, though, how Henry died from natural causes. Henry VIII's body then lay in his chamber for two days after he died. It's even believed that his passing away was kept a secret, with meals still being brought to his lodgings. It was then, on the 31st of January, that the death of King Henry was announced and his son was then taken to the Tower of London to be proclaimed the new King of England. Henry's body was then embalmed, and encased in lead and surrounded by burning tapers. He lay in state in the presence chamber at Whitehall, before being moved to the chapel. Across the nation, bells would then ring in memory of the late King. On the 14th of February, 1547, Henry VIII's body made its final journey from Whitehall to Windsor. The huge coffin, which was covered in blue velvet and cloth of gold, was laid down on a chariot drawn by black horses, who drew it along the roads that had been prepared and widened for the procession. On top of the coffin was a wax effigy of the king, and on its head a crown atop a nightcap and black satin, full of precious stones. The procession paused overnight at Sion Abbey, before the next day reaching Windsor. It took sixteen strong yeomen of the guard to carry Henry's coffin into the church and lower it into a vault at St George's Chapel, with the king then being laid to rest next to Jane Seymour, his queen, and the mother of Edward VI. At the conclusion of the funeral ceremony, the chief officers of the household broke their white staves of office and threw them into the vault of the coffin, signifying the end of their roles as serving their master. King Henry VIII had planned to be buried in a Renaissance tomb that had been taken from Cardinal Wolsey after his death in Leicester, but the work on this had never been completed. Remarkably, Henry's sarcophagus still survives today. However, it is now at the base of Lord Nelson's tomb in the crypt at St Paul's Cathedral. Henry VIII lies today under a 19th century block marble slab that simply reads, In a vault beneath this marble slab, are deposited the remains of Jane Seymour, Queen of King Henry VIII, 
1537, and King Henry VIII, 1547. Henry VIII is remembered today by many as a tyrant king, a man who caused great suffering, and a man who had two of his wives killed. He is thought to have been one of England's most notorious monarchs, but Henry Tudor died a somewhat of a quiet death. He was surrounded by peace, and was kept company by the Archbishop of Canterbury and members of his household. His death is somewhat the opposite of the life Henry led. His time on this earth was filled with chaos and pain through his executions, the political changes he ignited and the religious reforms he prompted. Henry was a king who captivates the attention of many today, and in his death he left a legacy, be it mostly negative through the stories of his somewhat barbaric reign, but also through his daughters, Mary I, his eldest with his first wife Catherine of Aragon, who reigned for a short while, but it was his second daughter, Elizabeth I, daughter of his second wife Anne Boleyn, the wife he had brutally executed, who sat on the throne for a reign of 45 years. Whether Henry would be proud of his daughter for being such a respected ruler, I do not know, but one thing I do know is that if it wasn't for Henry's behaviour as king, then Elizabeth wouldn't have had the experience to turn her into the inspirational woman she grew to become. She took her negative experiences and learnt from the mistakes of her father, and became one of England's most remembered and idolised women. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.